Welcome to AFCB TV. I'm joined by club historian Neil Vacher, and we're going to go through our respective teams of the decade. Welcome, Neil. Let's start Thank you, with Neil. the all-important goalkeeper position. Just tell me who you've chosen as your goalkeeper and why. Well, there's three names in the frame for me. Um, going back to the beginning of the decade, Shuan Jalal. Uh, I thought he did extremely well for us in those first few seasons. Arta Boritz has been really very consistent for us during his time here. And uh, more recently, of course, this season, Aaron Ramsdale was made such a magnificent start to his uh, Premier League career. So who are you going with? Arta Boritz. And I'm going to join you there. Um, I think what you've got to remember is in the season that we won promotion to the Premier League, we were 15th when he came in, when he signed on loan from Southampton and he went on to keep, I think it was about 16 clean sheets in that season, playing a pivotal part in the club's promotion. He was a tremendous presence in goal, certainly. Yeah. So one out of one so far, Neil. We're agreed on that one anyway. OK, moving on to defenders. Neil, let's start with a, a right-sided defender, shall we? Well, at full-back, I would have Simon Francis. I think Simon um, is uh, a tremendous presence, both going forward and defensively. And uh, in his prime, he was a tremendous outlet also for the goalkeepers when we were trying to get the ball upfield. Um, he linked extremely well with whoever was playing on the wing and became a very dangerous overlapping fullback and also a very good leader. Let's swiftly move on to your left back because I think they could be similar to me. Well, yes, Charlie Daniels would be my choice there. He's been extremely consistent over the virtually the entire decade and uh, been with us for so many uh, seasons. Um, I just think he's a tremendous professional and somebody who is utterly dependable. He has limitations, he knows what his limitations are, but he's never let that trouble him and uh, he, he's always given 100% for the club. So that's three out of three, Neil, because I'm with you on both Simon Francis, Charlie Daniels. Um, can't be forgotten that well, you know when, when they came in, they came in on loan initially in, in uh, late 2011. Um, it wasn't a fantastic time for the club. It was you know quite a tough start for both of them. Um, then they signed permanently in the, in the 2012, and like you said, you know League One, Championship, and Premier League. You know that really does um, show how good a player both men are that they've been able to adapt and adjust and take it in their stride almost. It's been absolutely brilliant. I, I don't imagine that either of them could have foreseen what, uh, what level that they were perhaps capable of playing at. And I think they probably exceeded their own expectations and uh, absolute credit to their profession. Central defence, there's been a few candidates here, I believe. Well, there are a few, yes. Uh, going back to the beginning of the decade again, there's uh, Jason Pearce who uh, again was a, a wholehearted uh, defender who gave everything uh, on the pitch and uh, was also a good leader. Um, we had Tommy Elphick, who, well, talking of leaders, I don't think they were any better than Tommy during the decade. Steve Cook is another who could fall into the leader category. Whenever he stood in, he's uh, shown a tremendous presence on the field and led the team with energy and enthusiasm, a real warrior. Um, and probably the most skillful of all of them, Nathan Ackie. Um, lovely lad who's, um, who's really grown into the culture of the football club, having come here from Chelsea and uh, you know, a tremendous asset both on and off the pitch. Very skillful player, capable of far more, I think, in, in the future. And uh, without any doubt, uh, a Dutch international of the future. Are you going for a Mike Bassett 442 here? Because if you are, I need to know your central defenders. Yeah, I'm that from that sort of age, Neil. 442, uh, straight 442, that suits me fine. So, who are the two, your choices? My two choices would be Steve Cook and Nathan Ackie. OK, well, we've got four out of four there, uh, Neil, but I'm going to just throw a little spanner in the works because I'm going with um, three central defenders. And you touched on um, Tommy Elphick, what an inspirational captain an inspirational leader, an inspirational man on and off the pitch. Um, and he makes my team of the decade and he's the captain of my team of the decade. Him and Steve Cook, ever present in the promotion season to the Premier League. Um, uh, an absolute um, a colossus on the pitch and a colossus off the pitch. I remember when we used to deal, um, we used to deal with him in that season when I was working at the Echo. He was a gentleman to deal with. 
He was a go-to man when, when, when things hadn't gone well, never one to, to sort of, you know, to turn a blind eye or not want to be interviewed. Um, and for that, he will always remain, remain uppermost in my thoughts, and that's why he makes my team of the decade. Perfectly understandable. If, uh, if we're having a substitutes bench, the first name on it for me would be Tommy Elphick for those reasons as well. I think what, what it's fair to say, Neil, is one of the difficulties in picking a team of the decade, when the team has played in four different divisions, you, you've got to remember that you know, players, you've got to pick comparable players to who is playing in those divisions. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll discover more of those later on. Okay. So moving on to midfield, lots and lots of options here again. Neil, start on the right-hand side of midfield for us. Well, on the right-hand side, my three considerations really for um, a, a wide right position. I feel I should, shouldn't forget Adam Smith because uh, he could easily have got into the team at right back. He was also so good going forward, he could have got into it and, uh, on the right, uh, right side of midfield. Unfortunately, he hasn't. Um, I also considered Ryan Fraser who's uh, done extremely well for us over recent seasons. But overall, I think Matt Ritchie would be my choice uh, in that position. I think Matt uh, is such a player that our team always looked better whenever he was in it. Um, capable of, of uh, anything, really, with regard to, to shooting ability. Scored some magnificent goals, pacey, um, linked in well with the rest of his teammates. And uh, yeah, just a, a great asset to the team. So swiftly moving on to the left midfield. Well, on the uh, wide position on the left, I've chosen Charlie Daniels at fullback. Therefore, we must have Mark Pugh in midfield because the two of them together, uh, well, they were a double act, weren't they, for, for so many seasons here. They linked up uh, together incredibly well. Um, Pugh was, was also good at getting back and helping Charlie out with the defensive duties. And we all know what Charlie was capable of going forward. They complemented each other so wonderfully well that um, they've got to be there for me together. So we know Neil's gone with a 4-4-2 with a four, four, formation, so um, I'm intrigued to know who your two central midfielders are here. Well, the first one is Harry Arter, who uh, once again is uh, a, a guy who's shown so much spirit and uh, character and ability in his years with us. Uh, he's somebody who's come from non-league football with us and progressed to the Premier League. And his uh, never-say-die attitude um, has been an inspiration in times of crisis. So I, I couldn't imagine us really uh, leaving Harry out of any team of the decade. And alongside him, I've gone for somebody who's not been with us all that long, but is just pure class. And I think that's, uh, that's being shown increasingly so this season. That's Jefferson Lerma. He looks uh, head and shoulders a Premier League player and uh, he manages to get himself out of situations with his ability um, that I, I can't imagine that uh, too many would be able to. Uh, I will admit he has me at times thinking, oh no, no, not that way Jefferson, but he always seems to find a way out and he's just quality. So we've got a rare difference of opinion here in the uh, midfield options, simply because I've gone for a 5-3-2, a very attacking 5-3-2 formation. So Tommy Elphick was the first change which we didn't agree on. Um, I'm definitely going with Harry Arter in central midfield. I thought Harry was so good, I thought he could do it all on his own and he didn't need a partner in there. And I, while I agree that Jefferson Lerma has been outstanding in his, in his year and a half here, I think he's going to be a man for the next decade. He will be in the team of the next decade. So looking back for my team of the decade, I've got the three midfielders. I've got Matt Ritchie with you. I've got Mark Pugh with you and Harry Arter. And, you know, I cast my mind back to when Harry came in, like you said, a uh, nominal fee that, that the club paid from Woking. Um, took a little bit of time to settle. Farmed out on loan to Carlisle, let's not forget where he scored his first goal. Looked like he, you know, his days might have been numbered here, but you know, he certainly proved everybody wrong. And he was an absolute stalwart of League One, of the Championship, and in the early days in the Premier League. So I think we've both got some good midfield there. Strikers, Neil, um, been a lot of goals scored in this decade and a few candidates here. So what's your shortlist, shall we say? My shortlist um, contains five names. Lewis Graben, Jan Kermigant, Brett Pittman, Joshua King and Callum Wilson. Uh, all five of those have done a tremendous job at different stages during the decade. I think you've got three exceptional cases there in Callum Wilson, Joshua King and Brett Pittman. And uh, it's very difficult to decide on a two, really. But uh, 
in the end, I would go for Callum Wilson and Brett Pittman. And I agree wholeheartedly with you. Um, Callum Wilson, the leading goal scorer for the club in the decade with 58 goals, um, hit the ground running as soon as he signed from Coventry. Uh, gone on and, and bearing in mind he's had those two awful injuries as well. So how many goals would he have had if he hadn't had those two bad injuries? So we've got Callum Wilson at one end of the decade who's knocking in the goals. And then let's not forget, you know, Brett Pittman, um, the start of the decade. OK, I know that his exploits from 2008, 2009 don't count, but he continued that into 2010 when he was the leading goal scorer and we won promotion from League Two. And then he went off to Bristol City. Uh, and then he came back and again he was the leading goal scorer when we've got promotion to the championship bearing in mind he didn't play the first two or three months as well which was a remarkable feat um, and he's got 54 goals in the decade so for me um, it was uh, those two were an automatic choice right Neil I'm going to really put you on the spot now um, you've given us your team of the decade I want you to now pick your player of the decade Ooh, that's a difficult one um been thinking about this a, bit, a little bit you know and um, I think it, it must go to the one person who's scored our first Premier League hat-trick and he became the first AFC Bournemouth player to score a goal in a full international for England so that means it's Callum Wilson. Fair enough um, I'm going to have to disagree with you um, and I'm going with Brett Pittman um, simply because um, I wonder whether we would have made the Premier League without the exploits of Brett in those early days, 2009, 2000, I know 2009 wasn't in the decade, but you know, that was the platform for what, what the club's gone on to achieve, 2010. You know, in the, in the, in the, the, the school of hard knocks, the League Two and the League One, you know, um, some fantastic goals, some fantastic performances. You know, you and I can remember that scene in the Blythe Spartans dressing room where he'd been sent off um, and, you know, he looked like a broken man that day and that could have been the end of his career almost. Dreadful but evening, yeah. the manager came back, Eddie Howe came back, put his arm around him and um, for me, he's my player of the decade. So in summary, my AFC Bournemouth team of the decade sees Arthur Boric in goal, Simon Francis at right back, Charlie Daniels at left back, Tommy Elphick, Steve Cook, Nathan Aki as a three-man central defence. I've got Harry Arter as central midfield. I've got Matt Ritchie on the right. I've got Mark Pugh on the left. Callum Wilson and Brett Pittman up front. So the Neil Vater AFC Bournemouth 11 of the decade. Um, let's start then with Arter Boric in goal. And then the back four, right to left. Simon Francis, Steve Cook, Nathan Aki and Charlie Daniels. In midfield, it's Matt Ritchie, Harry Arthur, Jefferson Lerma and Mark Pugh. And then up front, Callum Wilson and Brett Pittman. Neil, it's been fantastic sitting here reminiscing with you about our respective teams of the decade. Uh, lots to talk about, lots of players, lots of fantastic performances. And, you know, coming through four divisions, it's been, it's been a memorable decade. I know that when I spoke to you and I said that I was going to do this, I said, has there been a more memorable decade in the, in the club's history? And I know why you laughed at me when I said that, because obviously it's, um, it's been unsurpassed. We would love to hear from the supporters, your team of the decade. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with Neil? Do you disagree with both of us? We would love to hear it all across our social media channels. So please get in touch with us. Neil? Thank you, Neil. It's been uh, an absolute pleasure to, uh, to select my 11. Thank you for having me and uh, a happy new year to you. And a happy new year to you and, and all our supporters. A happy new year to everyone.